Coming up on Texas Home Improvement. Jim and Adam work on putting the finishing touches on the inside of the house. All right, so we're getting ready to start the tiling for the backsplash. Smile, you woke up in Texas. I'm Jim Dutton, and I've been a contractor here in the great state of Texas for over 40 years. It ain't a good day till we tear something up. Tools make the job. To help as many people as I possibly could, I started a radio show over 20 years ago. Now to help even more people, I'm rolling up my sleeves and hitting the road. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, look how beautiful it is. In Texas, most contractors don't have to have a license, so it's buyer beware. And that's what you get when you hire a bootleg contractor. You don't know what you're talking about. I've been building homes for over... Yeah, and I've been fixing homes for over 40 years because of people like you. It doesn't work in Texas. This is Texas Home Improvement. Previously on Texas Home Improvement. All right, so we're getting ready to put in the door that goes from the kitchen into the mudroom into the laundry room. Well, and we've got a non-pre-hung door, which means we're gonna to have to build the casing. This is gonna be a router guide. And basically what we'll do is where you see the little tick mark on the end, we'll line it up with that, clamp it into place, and we'll be able to just drop the router in there and take all the wood out we need for the hinge. There you go. One non-pre-hung door installed. What Adam and Valerie decided to do is they're going to use a concrete, like a con concrete countertop. And so Adam's going to go through the process of forming it up, putting in the reinforcement, getting it ready. You've got to let it sit and you've got to have the time to do that. So if you're thinking about doing a project and you want to squeeze it into a, an hour or two, concrete's probably not the job for you. Adam's house is almost finished, and today we're going to start with that one last big thing that's got to be done. That's the backsplash in the kitchen. All right, so we're getting ready to start the tiling for the backsplash. The stove range will go here, and everything on this wall from the edge all the way to the corner of the wall is going to be tile. We're going to be using these little self-leveling. It goes up underneath the tile you put this little cap on and you can twist it and it pulls everything where it's level. Uh, basically what we're going to be using is these subway tiles. And so the finish you know, will be offset a little bit. In doing this, we're going to have to move the plugs out a little bit so we got extensions in order to pull our outlets out a little bit further as well. So we're just going to go ahead and get started. We're going to start by just using these little spacers on the bottom. And I put tape along and paper here to keep from messing up the countertop. And then the spacers are to keep the tile off the countertop so that <clears throat> uh, when we're finished, we'll be able to caulk that and seal. I want to leave a little gap there for the caulking to go into. Let's get it going. So now that we're installing the backsplash, I wanted to take just a few minutes to show you some tricks that'll help you save some time and headaches, just in case you're interested in doing a project like this. All right, so we're gonna be using a pre-mixed adhesive today, and we're gonna be using the little eighth inch notch trowel because smaller tiles, you use too big of notches, it'll, material will come squeezing out between, and you don't want that, so. And this gives you kind of the setting size of the notches, whether you use a V trowel or squared. We're gonna be using the squared. Now, you can see exactly why I put the tape and paper down now to protect the countertop from getting this material on it. Nice thing about working with 
pile and pre-mixed mastics like this, you can basically start and stop whenever you want. When you get to a spot where you want to stop, all you got to do is scrape off whatever mastic you already put on and reapply new mastic when you're ready to start again. It, it really isn't a, a complicated uh, setup at all. All right. So again, I'm just gonna use these little tiles or these little uh, spacers to keep it up off the countertop. Now some people prefer to put the mastic on the back of the tile. And if you do them bigger squares, sometimes that's actually easier. On these little squares, it's usually not. But I did miss getting right all the way up to the edge there, so I'll just apply it to the back here and be able to put that into place. Okay, the backsplash is really coming along, and all we have left is to put the last few remaining tiles along the wall, grout it, and clean it up. Coming up on Texas Home Improvement. So this project has really had its ups and downs, but none of us were prepared for what was about to happen. Here's some stuff you need to know. Hey, my name's John Jones, and today we're going to show you how to trim a door and get it installed. So first, we're going to Start with our door laying flat on the sawhorses, and then we're going to measure from the bottom of the door to the top of the door so that we can get our trim and get our trim measured and kept properly. So we'll start at the bottom, and then we have, if you look, there's a notch right there. So we're at 81 and a quarter is what we're going to cut our trim. And uh, so we'll get the, the side pieces cut, and then once we get the side pieces cut and nailed on, we'll measure for our top trim and get it put on. So next we're going to go ahead and put the door casing on the door while it's laying flat. It's a little bit easier that way, so whenever we go to install the door, um, one side's already done, and it'll help us actually make it for an easier install. So first we're going to take the trim, and we have, once again, you have the line. So we're gonna start at the top of the door, and we're gonna line it up right on that line, and match it up with the line on the top. So whenever we shoot this in, we want to make sure that we shoot the nail straight in so that it doesn't shoot out the side of the, the door. And we'll nail the trim on all the way down. Making sure that we stay on the line all the way down that's on the jam. And do the next side. Once again, starting at the top of the door. Okay, next we'll get the top piece or the header cut. And the reason why we're doing that now is because we wanna make sure that we have a good accurate measurement so our joints here on our angles are good and tight. So when I measure this, um, we're 24 and a half inches. I like to burn an inch off of my tape measure to get a more accurate cut. So we'll hold on 25 and a half and mark one inch. All right, so next we're gonna make sure that everything fits and lines up the way it should. And then first on this, we're gonna go ahead and shoot the bottom corner. That's the top corner here. Okay, and then what I like to do, just to make sure that our, our door here, our trim is nice and flush, is I like to line it up now and shoot it in from the top. We're nice and flush here so that we don't have an overlap or, or the trim hanging over. And then coming over here, shoot the next corner. And the same thing, shoot it from the top. And then go ahead and nail off the 
header. Okay, now we're ready to go set the door in place. All right, so we'll get the door set into the uh, opening here. The first thing we're gonna do is make sure everything's checked for level. Level up our hinges here. The door needs to come up just a little bit though so that the top of our reveal will match all the way across. All right, and then, now that we have our trim on already, it makes it a little bit easier for us to actually install the door once we get plumbed up because we can shoot the trim to the wall. Once we got our reveal right and the door is level, across top. We want to make sure that the reveal across or down the door is the same too. So we want to watch that as we nail the door off. And there you go. Now your door's installed. So this project has really had its ups and downs, but none of us were prepared for what was about to happen. One thing we talk about a lot on the show is this is real. I mean, we're trying to show you exactly what's happening. This project had a situation around it that really, I can't even share all of it with you about Adam, but we're gonna to try to show you some of the information. We gotta keep a little bit of it private just to respect Adam's privacy. All right, you can see we've got some people in here helping us today at Adam's house trying to finish the project up. And this all stemmed from about two weeks ago on uh, Wednesday. Adam didn't feel good. Ended up going in to, to be checked out and they really didn't find anything. Gave him some uh, steroids for a really bad headache, sent him home. Saturday morning I'm at his house and you know we're looking at getting ready he wasn't feeling good again and I left to go pick something up he called me and said I need help and basically all right you're gonna uh, you'll have stuff you can cut too and then we'll go back and finish that up but give me just a minute So do you want to start it over, or? Do you think you can get through it all over, or no? I might. Okay. We can try. If not, okay. we'll start from the back half. Hold on, let me adjust. I want to make sure I see work in the back. Okay, rolling. All right, so you see we got a couple people here. Actually, we got more than that working on Adam's house. And it, it stems from an incident that happened two weeks ago. We were, we've been working on Adam's house. We're at the very tail end, you can see just a little backsplash left to put on, grout it, and some trim boards. Well, Adam had a stroke two weeks ago, 33 years old. I can't finish it without him. He's here at the house during the day and stuff. I don't want him to have to look at it. So I called a friend of mine, Frank Shelton, with Shelton Construction. He stepped up, came in. His guy's gonna knock it out probably in a day, maybe two days. I mean, that, that's how close we were to having everything finished, but uh, I just don't want Adam to have to stay in the house not being completely finished while he's going through physical uh, therapy and all that stuff. With Frank and his crew around, the rest of the project is going to be finished in two, maybe three days at the latest.
Frank, I appreciate you bringing your guys over and kind of bailing me out on this one. Absolutely. Uh, you know, after Adam had the stroke, I kind of needed to push and get it finished. Right. Uh, didn't really know who else to call, so I appreciate you getting the guys over here and getting it done. Happy to help. Happy to help. Y'all had the, y'all had the hard part done. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's been a long process. Uh, but you know, you're finishing up on all the the trim work and uh, get everything painted up, get all the tile finish being put in and the grouting and stuff, and, and uh, you know that that makes it where now when he comes home and sits, he don't have to look at it all unfinished. Right. Right. Yeah, they'll, they'll be in here today. They're going to be grouting. They finished up. Uh, Y'all had the backsplash almost done. Yeah. And so, so it uh, didn't take long to go ahead and wrap that up. And they'll have it grouted today and be done with that part of it. Um, the baseboards and stuff are going in. So, going to paint those today. And so, hopefully, he can come home to a semi finished home. Yep. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, a big thanks to Frank Shelton and all the guys at Shelton Construction for helping me finish up Adam's house. Now Adam and Valerie have nothing to worry about and Adam can focus on the recovery that he needs to take care of. Next week on Texas Home Improvement. Well Adam, obviously I've seen the house and Johan's seen it and Charlie has, but everybody else hasn't. You want to show them around real quick what we did? Oh no, I brought more than a cake. I brought the entourage. Hey. Oh. Hey, got a question during the week? Go to our website, thipro.com, and click on the Ask Jim button. If you're looking for a great contractor, one that'll treat you fair and get the job done right, go to thipro.com and take a look at the contractors in your area that I've already checked out. Hey, got a question about your project? Join me on News Talk 820 WVAP every Saturday at 12 o'clock. You can call in, ask your question, and get your project going. Don't forget to listen to Texas Home Improvement every Saturday and Sunday right here in Houston on News Talk 740 KTRH. Don't forget to listen to Texas Home Improvement every Saturday right here in Austin on News Talk 1370 AM KJCE. Water restoration, fire damage, uh, even mold remediation. Water. Let's do it one more time. Yeah, they, 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 the whole time. Hey, let me do Let's try that one again. Here we come to nothing. Burning my retinas right now. <laughs> <laughs>